What's up everyone, it's Aaron from Rudy Visuals and in this video we're reviewing the Manfrotto MVG220 which is a three axis stabilized camera gimbal. We've been using this over for about a month now for a few different projects and so far while it does have some issues, we do think it's a very welcome addition to the ever increasing camera gimbal market. Full disclosure, Manfrotto were kind enough to send this to us for review, but as always, all thoughts and opinions are fully independent, but a big thank you to Jessica, specifically at Manfrotto, for making this video possible. So you can grab one of these for around 299 pounds, I think it's about $350 in the US, and it's a gimbal designed for smaller to mid-sized DSLR and mirrorless setups, with its max payload of 2.2 kilograms. There is also a higher end model that can handle up to four and a half kilos, but I think it's a lot more expensive as well. Now, if you take a closer look at the gimbal, you'll actually realize it does look very similar in terms of the design and functionality to the Feutech AK2000C that we reviewed a couple of months ago. You can check out that review somewhere here. It may just seem like a rebadged AK2000C, and it does seem like they were designed from the same blueprint. But while there are obviously some similarities, there are also some differences as well. For example, the much improved improved build quality and this very useful handle that attaches to the back of the gimbal which makes it possible to get these kind of low down shots a lot easier. And honestly the first thing that you will notice uh, when you unbox this is just how good the gimbal feels, how well made it is in terms of the build quality compared to the AK2000C which is a little bit plasticky. And to be fair this is something that we expect from Manfrotto products. The MBG220 feels very solid and robust and it definitely looks and feels more expensive than it actually is. The weight of the gimbal is about 1.1 kilograms so it's also a fairly light and more compact gimbal compared to some of its rivals on the marketplace. For those of you who prefer smaller setups and you don't want or even need a bigger size gimbal this makes the MVG220 a very appealing option. There's a nice mixture of metal and plastics on the body and apart from a few specific areas overall it feels very very well made. I particularly love this dial the rubberized handle and this back handle which is covered in this really lovely soft touch material. You can also remove this handle if you want by removing these screws. The actual mounting plate is tightened with this lever which makes it a lot faster to take the camera on and off without having to rebalance it as long as you've got the same camera and lens. Really the only flimsy feeling part of the gimbal are the tightening locks on the axes which unfortunately do feel quite flimsy and like the AK2000C they can be dislodged with not that much effort. That's a little bit disappointing considering how well the rest of the gimbal feels. Now the layouts of the buttons are pretty much standard for a gimbal like this. At the back there is a trigger over here for switching between different modes. For example you can triple press so that it goes into this selfie mode and then double again to go back to normal. And there's also an LCD screen here on the front, a joystick, some control buttons, and on the right side you have your power and USB-C and on this side here this big chunky dial. You can use it for focus pulling and you can also use it to tilt the camera as well. And on the top here you'll find some ports to connect to your camera and for additional accessories as well. Now as I mentioned before the max payload of the MVG220 is 2.2 two kilograms which makes it more suited for smaller to mid-sized DSLR and mirrorless cameras. Uh, I have this very old 100D just for example but we've mostly been using this gimbal with our Sony a7 III, a Tamron 28-75 f2.8 and a 50mm f1.8 with mostly good results. With the Nifty 50 you're looking at a combined weight of about 0.83 kilograms and with this setup it worked great tilting panning smoothly following subjects with ease and keeping movements nice and fluid even when running and moving fast. However with the Tamron which is a bigger and longer lens I did occasionally run into some unwanted movements. Sometimes the gimbal would pan or tilt when I didn't intend it to or it would kind of jerk around for a few seconds before settling down and other times the camera would just flop over until I reset. It did mean that I had to redo some shots a few times before I could get it the way I wanted. It didn't happen all the time but that unpredictability did throw me off somewhat. I found that putting it in the smooth setting helped a lot instead of the normal or sport setting and also playing around with the payload and calibration settings every time you change your lens also helped. But if you're on a job and you have people waiting for you, you know, the last thing you want to do is 
be there fiddling with settings every time you change your lens and camera setup. You know, especially if you're shooting like a wedding video or some other important paid video work. When it worked, it did work great. The issues only happened once in a while. So it seems like something that they might be able to fix with like a firmware update or something like that. I would say if you're using this with a lighter camera, you're kind of like Sony A6000 series, your crop sensor Canons with you know smaller prime lenses, it will probably be fine. But even still, the A7 III and Tamron 28 to 75 does have a combined weight of 1.2 kilograms, which is well under the advertised max payload of 2.2. So yeah, not really sure what's happening there. Thankfully, when it comes to the ease of use, the gimbal itself is pretty easy to set up. If you've ever used any kind of camera gimbal before, well, getting it balanced follows pretty much the same steps. The locks, despite feeling a bit flimsy, do also help to stop the camera from flopping about when you're carrying it around. And I also like that the camera stays in place once you have it balanced. I also love this back handle, which makes it really easy to shoot under slung and get those kind of low down shots. It's very fast and simple now compared to previous gimbals where you've had to kind of flip it down over awkwardly. So it allows you to get more creative shots much easily and also makes things like the inception mode more usable. As for the menu and UIs, it's also very simple and straightforward and the touchscreen actually worked great, which is, <laughs> I love that, thank you very much. I uh, particularly love the animation when you move the joystick, which is just like a nice little touch. In terms of the battery life, Manfrotto claims it can last up to 14 hours with a well-balanced camera on it. And we've taken it out on shoots that lasted like two Two, three, four hours at a time and came home still with plenty of juice. So that seems about right. The battery is built into the gimbal as well and charges via USB-C, which is also a big bonus. As with most gimbals, there is also a phone app that you can download and use. It connects pretty quickly via Bluetooth and gives you the convenience of being able to control the gimbal hands-free, control the camera, which is also useful for shooting things like you know, time lapses or like selfie shots. So overall, the Manfrotto MVG220 is a solid, if unspectacular addition to the gimbal market. It is a little bit more than a rebadged AK2000C basically. And while it did have some occasional performance hiccups, most of the time it did handle just fine. It features Manfrotto's trademark excellent build quality it's fairly lightweight has that awesome back handle design for conveniently switching to low slung mode and it's also very easy to set up and use so for 299 pounds it's also pretty attractively priced as well so it's definitely worth your consideration if you're looking for a cheaper lightweight and well built gimbal it's not doing anything new but it's a very good solid option once again thank you to manfrotto for sending this over to us if you liked this video and found it useful, hit that thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. Follow us on socials. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks again, peace.